Turn 3 of scenario S169 night fans. Valley phase 3rd Soviet turn. Dice roll to assess wind change. 1, 4, no wind change. Soviet unit attempts to rally with leader 9 minus 1. Modifiers will be plus 4 for the DN marker minus 1 for the leader. 6, 4, 10, the unit's morale is not recovered and the DN marker remains because the dice result is higher than the Soviet unit's morale. Prep fire phase. Soviet units will attempt to launch starships. Soviet leader 9-1 will attempt to launch a starship 3 hexes away over hex 26 cubic meters, needing a 4 or less on the result of a dime. With this launch mode, in case of success, there will be a deviation from the starship's positioning. 1. Success this star shell will move following the direction determined by the roll of two dice, the red die determining the direction and the white die determining the distance. 3, 3 and the star shell is positioned over hex 27J1. Half squad with leader 8-0 will attempt to launch star shell on hex 27k7 needing to ward less for success. 5. Unsuccessful Leader 8-0 will attempt to launch a star shell over hex 27k7 using the same launch mode. 1. Success 3. 5 and the star shell will be positioned at 27f4. Movement phase. Unit at 26 C5 will begin movement towards the finish positions. This unit will need to roll the dice to determine if it has gone astray. This unit moves without straying to the hex 26 F3, hex adjacent to an illuminated area. From there it can continue without the risk of straying until it uses up the six movement factors to which it is entitled. Unit at 26 C8 begins its movement and advances without being affected by strain. Half squad at 27 N1 begins its movement and advances without straying using the four movement factors to which it is entitled. This unit entered the scenario transported by Erosin and lost the right to the cloaking marker which would allow movement with six movement factors. The second half squad also continues its way to 2705 where it eliminates the Finnish cloaking dummy. An action that should have occurred in the rally phase but that Jim will do now is to reconstitute a squad from the half squads at 27L4, which by the special rules of this scenario the Soviets can do without needing the help of a leader and without going through a test check. This stack can initially move without needing to evaluate the possibility of straying because it has the finish unit known as 27K8 and moves to N5 hex from which it loses line of sight of the enemy and will need to assist straying. In 2707 it suffers straying using the last movement factors in the direction indicated by the result of the die. As it does not have the three movement factors necessary to enter 27N7 elevation with snow and ends its movement under a TI marker, temporarily immobilized. A new reconstitution of squad 5 to 7 is carried out from half squads in 27D7. This squad continues in hexes adjacent to the illuminated area until 27H7. One of the units in 27G10 moves to the unilluminated area and continues without the need to assist straying to the hex adjacent to the fins in 27K8.
In this hex it suffers an attack from the fins with 6 firepower, doubled to 12 because the fire is at point blank range, reduced by half because the target is concealed. Therefore, the firing will be done with 6 firepower with modifiers of minus 2 FFMO FF name plus 1 for the hindrance of night conditions. 5, 3, 8, minus 1 to 7. It is a normal morale check with the Soviets losing the cloaking marker. 5. The squad passes. Squad in 26 M5 moves towards the hex adjacent to the illuminated area, then continues to O3 where it again passes the straying test and ascends to hex P2. In this hex it suffers an attack from the Finnish squad in 26 Q2 with 8 firepower, reduced to 4 because the squad is under the concealment marker. The modifiers are minus 2, FFMO, FF name, plus 1, hindrance of night conditions. Double 4 minus 1, 7, Jim considers it as the fence covering, which does not happen with Finnish units due to the rules for the fence and it is a normal morale check. 5, 4, 9, Soviet squad has its morale broken. Half squad at 26 L5 moves toward the hex adjacent to the illuminated area testing for straying and from their heads to 26 Q4. Unit at 26 G10 moves to adjacent hexes to the illuminated area and continues to J2 where it suffers a subsequent first fire from the fins in an adjacent hex. The fire will be with 3.5 firepower, 2.5 FP from the unit and 1 FP from the anti-tank rifle, doubled by the point-blank fire, held by the Soviet's cloaking marker. The fire will be made with 2 firepower minus 1. 2, 6, 8, minus 1 to 7, with no effect and the Soviets continue to 27 K7. In this hex the Finns use a risky strategy and launch a final protective fire on the Soviets. The fire will be with 2 firepower minus 1. 6, 4, 10, the Soviets are not affected and the Finns have their morale broken. 26 F10 to J6 26 G4 to M4 26 G5 to M4 26 G5 moves to H5 and suffers a strain and dislocation to C3. 26 G3 to L4 Defensive fire phase No effects Advancing fire phase The Soviets choose not to fire At the end of this phase the effects of the gun flashes cease Route phase 27K8 to L8 in low crawl The Soviets should have started this phase first 26P2 to O3 Advance Phase The Soviet units advance one hex, except for the stack under the TI marker. 2nd Combat Phase The unit at 27H7 recovers the concealment marker. The TI marker must be removed from the Soviet stack and at the end of close combat phase, the effects of starshells should cease. Rally Phase 3rd Turn of the Fins Wind Change 6. 4. No Wind Change 
since the red dye is 6 there will be a change in luminosity NVR. The white dye determines the change and with the result of 4 and since star shell has already been thrown in this scenario, the NVR increases from 4 to 5 hexes. The fins can attempt the auto relief and will attempt to do so with the unit in hex 27L8. The modifiers will be plus 4 for the DM marker, plus 1 for the auto relay. 6, 4, 10, the auto relay does not occur, and the DM marker remains on the finish unit, dice result greater than the unit's morale. Attempt to rally by the Soviet squad in 26L5 with the modifiers minus 1 leader. 6, 3, 9, minus 1 to 8, the squad recovers morale. Prep fire phase. Unit hidden in 26K3 gives up concealment and will fire on the enemy units in the adjacent hex. Fire with 7 firepower doubled because it is at point-blank range, halved again by the Soviet cloaking marker. Fire with 6 firepower plus 1, hindrance due to night conditions. 9 plus 1, 10, no effect. Fire from 26 M2 on L3 with 2 firepower plus 1. 3 plus 1, 4, 1 morale check, and the Soviets lose the cloaking marker, and the dummy marker L is eliminated. 4 plus 1, 5, the Soviets pass. Fire from 26 L9 on the Soviets in L3 with 4 firepower plus 1. 5 plus 1, 6, normal morale check. 10, the Soviets have their morale broken. Fire from 26 Q2 on R3 with 4 firepower plus 1. 6 plus 1, 7, pin test check that Jim does not consider. Squad in 26 J3 gives up cloaking and fires on the Soviets in adjacent hex with 4 firepower plus 1. 9 plus 1, 10, no effect. Movement phase. The fins will try to gain freedom of movement by rolling a die whose result must be lower than the fins ELR, therefore requiring a result of 1 or 2. However, reading the freedom of movement rules more carefully, one of the ways to gain freedom of movement when they see a known enemy unit, and in this case the finish stack at 26 M1, L1, K3, J3, Q2 and 27, L8 should be guaranteed their freedom of movement without having to roll the dice to do so. Squad moves from 26, M1 to N1. The leader 9, minus 1 at 26, M1 will move and will try to hit the squad in hex S1 to make it gain freedom of movement. The fins have the ability to use skis, and since they are at a level 3 elevation, they will be able to use the bonus of two movement factors provided by units that use skis to descend one elevation level, which will increase the range of this leader. To do so, he spends one movement factor to leave the foxhole. With this movement he is under the sights of the Soviet unit under cloaking marker C at 27 L7, 4 hexes away. The cloaking marker C is removed and reveals to squads 6 to 8 that will fire on the finish leader. The fire will be with 12 firepower, halved to 6 because the target is beyond the ideal range of the Soviets, halved again to 3 because the leader is under the concealment marker. The modifiers will be minus 2, FFMO, FFNAN, plus 1, night vision conditions. Therefore, an unlikely fire with 2 firepower minus 1. 6 minus 1, 5, normal morale check, with the leader losing the concealment marker. 10, unfortunately the finish leader breaks, 
and the one residual fire marker is deposited on the attacked hex. Defensive fire phase. Units under cloaking marker G at 26 J4 reveal themselves and will fire on the fins in the adjacent hex at 26 J3. This attack will be with 7 firepower, doubled to 14 firepower because it is a point blank fire with the modifiers of plus 1, night conditions, minus 1 for the Soviet leader. Therefore, 12 firepower fire without modifiers. 7. 1 morale check. 10 plus 1, 11, the Finnish leader breaks. 5 plus 1, 6, and the squad passes. Firing from 26 L5 on K3 with 2 firepower. The modifiers will be plus 1, height advantage, minus 1, leader. Therefore, firing with 2 firepower without modifiers. 11. Unsuccessful. Advancing fire phase. The Finnish squad at 26 N1 gives up concealment and fires on the Soviets at N3. This Finnish unit has the assault fire capability, which will allow a fire with 4 firepower. The modifier will be plus 1, night conditions. Double 3, the Finns do not suffer from covering, is 6 plus 1, 7, which would be a pin test check, which Jim ignores. At the end of the advancing fire phase, the markers that provide gun flash are eliminated. Route phase. Soviets at 26 L4 to L5 in low crawl. The Finns should have started this phase. 26 J3 to K3. The Finnish leader with broken morale in 26 M1 into foxhole. 27 M9 to M10. Advance phase. Finnish units move one hex. Close combat phase. None of the units qualify to gain the concealment marker. All right friends, with the start of the rally phase of the fourth turn of the Soviets with the Soviet units in the vicinity of the Finnish positions. Apparently, the Finns will give up the defense of the objective hex in 26 S3 and will focus on the defense of hex M1. The Soviets are certainly one step away from conquering the objective in 26 S3 as they have a squad in R3. The situation in 26 M1 is more complicated as the Finnish units are concentrated in this region in a privileged elevated position. In addition, a valuable defensive position was built by the Finns, Foxhole which will make the task of the Soviets even more difficult. With this, we say goodbye until the next episode. Namaste.